Time to talk a little real Olympics here on TYT Sports. And we're focusing, of course, on USA basketball. First and foremost, we have got somewhat of a roster for the USA men's team because there's so many players dropped out. We started with LeBron, Steph, and we had our mouths were all watering how we we're going to be able to combine all the league's best players. And then they dropped out. Some of them still well, celebrating. We, some we of them still hanging KD out. And yeah, Paul you just George have KD, and, and Draymond, and Draymond Green. Green. There was a perfect picture that was on Twitter that Kyle said, uh, I dare you to go to the paint. And it was... Uh, the Marcus Cousins and Draymond Green just staring. Yeah. And there you drive one. to the paint. So we, we're, we're posing the question, which other teams involved in the Olympics could pose a challenge to the US, of course, them being the favorites at the moment. And bear with us, by the way. We're going to mention some rosters here, but as we know, with players flip-flopping on going to the Olympics, more so than a Kanye Taylor Swift friendship, ah. we need to understand that topical. we may be wrong. Yeah, topical, relevant. <laughs> Tag it, it'll <laughs> pop up. Uh, but either way, we're going to look at some of the teams that could potentially pose a question to the USA men's national team. And the first one, looking at Spain's notable. So, Jose Calderon. At the moment, Marc Gasol may not be going, I yeah, believe. So, we put off. that in, have to make, take him off. Editors, if you don't mind, big red strike. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Paul Gasol, Nicola, uh, Nicola, sorry, Mertic, and Ricky Rubio mm -hmm. of the Timberwolves. So, thoughts on this team, Coach Nick? Oh, I think this is a good team. I love the way they play. They have a lot of really good ball movement. It's really exciting when you see them get going and they can nail threes and spread the floor. Uh, without Marcus All, they don't have a lot of size. Uh, that hurts. With, you know, Powell is there, but that's not usually uh, enough for them, especially defensively. So uh, I don't know. I don't think they're going to be that competitive with as, as much as they need to be uh, you know, to make a run. So what I find uh, so amazing, there's two groups, right? Yeah. Uh, there's the group that the USA is going to win, obviously, and then there's the group that's going to have a winner have to face the USA in the gold medal game. Uh, because without sugarcoating it, it would be a huge shock if the USA doesn't come out of their group. <laughs> Iceland-England category or like... No, no, it would, I, I, I would consider that given the talent pool internationally, which is growing, mm -hmm. don't get us wrong, there's mm -hmm. a lot of players coming in, like even... Uh, I know you're going to get to some of them, like Sergio Rodriguez, if he was playing, uh, we're not exactly sure, but there's certain guys that we look towards and go, that's a fun player to have down playing in, uh, on the Olympic stage. But it's not all NBA first, second, third team yeah. guys because we have such an amazing talent pool. Now, Spain is one of what I would consider two teams, three teams, that could challenge the USA, make a game maybe last within 10 points mm -hmm. by the end score, because look historically through it. It's 50 point per game differentials yeah. for some of these. Yep. Uh, but I wanted to get to France, which has some notables, because I think France is actually the one team that could be the Spain. Yeah. Who has, and Spain is impressed in FIBA World Cup uh, tournaments in, if this is 16, so it was 14 and 10 and 6, 2006, those years. Uh, and of course, the Olympics as well. So France has some notables, uh, and, and they are absolutely worth noting. <laughs> Batum, Diao, Gobert, and Parker. Mostly because, in terms of this NBA-level talent, they all have a different position. <laughs> yeah. You know, mm -hmm. Turkey has always been a team that's been stacked with just bigs and big, powerful forwards. Gangly, awkward, athletically somewhat gifted forwards. That's a balanced team, at least with the NBA talent. You got defensive specialists, you have shooters, you have, you know, a course of Spurs match, or it used to be a Spurs match with Diao and Parker. Yeah. I'm curious, your guys' thoughts. Is no. France the team this year? I don't know. somehow I, come out of this. Uh, uh, <laughs> See, the thing is, you hit the nail on the head, right? And uh, I'm just going to keep it very generic. Like, it would be a tragedy if the U.S. didn't win this. And we will make a clip out of this to make it interesting because we do want to watch. We want to be like, all right, let's keep it within 10 points. But people who maybe don't watch basketball need to be enlightened and need to know that no sport in the world is controlled more so than the U.S. controls basketball. I'm talking about the top 10 to 20 players in the NBA are all USA, all from the USA. And uh, when you're looking at these players that make up decent rosters, like Brazil, you've got Barbosa and Varejao. Like, yeah, they're not bad rotation players that can fit in, and they're the stars of those teams. No other sport comes in comparison to that. It's not controlled by one market as much as it is in the US. And it's not a bad thing. I'm just stating to, to allow people to understand that that's how big of an upset it would be, even if you do lose most of your mm -hmm. all-stars. I mean, losing LeBron James, Steph Curry... Uh, and those type of players makes it more interesting because now they have to That's rely a little bit more so on just the second string talent like Kevin Durant and Draymond Green and those all-star players. Whereas 
other teams that are even going to try and pose a, uh, a question to the US needs to rely, I think, as you were alluding to, Coach Nick, on collective basketball, a more Spurs-like mm -hmm. uh, formation where they have to look to using the ball, moving it well, relying on outside shooting, and definitely don't try and take it through the paint with the big men that's going to be playing for the US, and rely on coaching as well. So do you think France will probably get the best chance? Is that what you're looking at? Or do you see any other teams posing more of a question? Well, you know, to me, it's look, first, it's NBA experience. Do they have enough of that? And then, B, do they have the guards? Mm -hmm. It used to be like they couldn't handle the pressure of the uh, talent of the, of the NBA guys in, in the Olympics. There is a little built-in uh, advantage because there's some rule differences yes, where about have, traveling and things that usually get the uh, USA caught up a little bit earlier on. They kind of figure it out later. But um, I would have to say, yeah, you know, even a guy like Joffrey Laverne, who's playing for, the, for France, is another big guy that's got a lot of skill, and he can shoot as well. So it's going to take uh, them getting hot, but if they can limit the turnovers, and they've been playing, remember, this team has been playing together forever. You yeah. know, Diao and Parker, uh, these guys really know each other well. So, uh, yeah, it definitely feels like, uh, and then with Gobert in the middle, controlling things, and he really can control things in, on the defensive end, uh, they do have a legitimate shot at competing with that, that U.S. team, which is not as strong as it's been in years past. Yeah. I loved uh, NBA Summer League. Rudy Gobert was wearing a uh, Paris St. Germain Rudy Gobert shirt. That's awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. I wonder I, if that's Rudy Gobert, the only <laughs> seven-footer walking around in a PSG shirt. As you know, in most sports, like the French are just usually resilient. You don't rule them out of anything. They're going to work not. collectively. Uh, and they as just, you mentioned before, Jeffrey Laverne, who plays with uh, yeah. the Nuggets, mm -hmm. another player to be included in that. I'm surprised they never took Fournier. It was mentioned in this uh, article by NBC. Evan Fournier, who signed with Orlando, Orlando Magic earlier in the month, was actually he missed qualifying because he was trying to figure out his contractual obligations yeah. for the next season. And then he chose that to add Gobert to the roster, asset, yeah, rather than Fournier. Fournier yeah. been a huge asset. It, that's going to really, it's going to really, really hurt them. Another shooter on the floor who can handle the ball. Fournier is terrific, and uh, without him, it's going to be there's going to be something missing on the France team on the blue. So yeah, we're all going to, I would say, agree. No disagreements here. What about uh, Brazil, the the host well, nation? Uh, they're going to put on a show. Uh, Anderson Verge, I was a hell of an actor. I'll give him credit <laughs> for that. Uh, our good friend Andre Snelling, who we do. NBA clips we've been wanting to get a full-blown flops per game statistic used and on the international stage oh man the whole world's gonna see it uh, but no you have two NBA uh, uh, re uh, NBA impressive players that have played together Vergeau and Leandro Barbosa Leandro Barbosa somehow has defied all logic in the fact that he has not slowed down mm -hmm. I don't get it like his speed up and down the court He's actually, I can't believe I'm going to make the soccer reference, he's faster with a ball in his hands than he's won without Nene too as well uh, on that roster. So it's not just Brazil because there's also Australia, and I wanted to get to that. As they're Australians. Because uh, they're, they're gritty. Patty Mills, Della Vidova, Andrew Bogut. They might beat the crap out of you. The Memphis Grizzlies. That might be team. what it takes to, <laughs> to really push some other teams out of the way. And again, I don't want to get to just the USA because the US, whoever's in the USA's path is an entirely different uh, situation because France could beat Australia, Australia could beat Spain, Spain. All those other teams are completely interchangeable. Yeah. And somebody has to come out of it to face, uh, or at least be in the gold medal game. So, uh, but back to um, Brazil and Australia, you know, I don't think I personally looking at their rosters and on paper is different from the game itself. I don't think they have what Spain or France has and the success they've had in the past. However, it's a, if you want to bet on a fun dark horse, take Australia, take a Brazil. Brazil's the home country. That sometimes goes a long way. Right. Fans, hometown are, fans. Are they immune to a Zika virus? Yeah, is that's that, right. is that what's <laughs> happening from there. Yeah. Maybe uh, they send some of the teams to train in a gym that's a little bit yeah, more prone well, to at that. Least they don't have to, but no one's be going for a morning swim before oh, their game. Please don't. No, no. Please don't. But let's not forget Jingles. Joe Ingles playing for Australia as well. Jingles, another right. another good NBA player, very mm -hmm. solid. Uh, and if Patty Mills can get hot, you know, running around there, and Kyle Lowry doesn't keep up with them. I mean, who knows how it's going to line up with the way they play each other. But, uh, you know, there, there's something there. But, you know, it's, yeah, again, a long shot. It's a fun one. I think we should be, we should be running some NBA 2K simulations at some point. We'll See what the, the good old computer says. Mm -hmm. uh, but, of course, guys, make sure to comment below because uh, the Olympics are coming up. It's going to be a lot of fun. We only get it every four years. This one's the biggest disaster of all time. <laughs> but at least inside there won't be, hopefully, the cameras will make it look pretty. Zika virus, mosquitoes, all the stuff we don't want to see. Uh, and comment below with who you think could really not just challenge the USA, but who's going to you know, make a run on the other side of the bracket, the other side of the group, out of Spain, France, Australia. I think there was even some... Uh, uh, China. From Serbia and China, too. Yeah, China's Serbia, China. Kind of 
Sure. They have their own league, and they might all be wearing Kobe's because they really do love Kobe Bryant over there. Yeah. Uh, like, favorite, subscribe. Make sure you head over to B-Ball Breakdown and follow Coach Nick on Twitter as well. All links are in the description box below. You can subscribe, go over to Facebook for uh, TYT Sports and for B-Ball Breakdown, and even for friends. Oh, <laughs>